guys, uh, welcome to another weekly analysis for the week of December 11 to December 17. Okay, so uh, first of all, apologize. The last Friday, I did not have time to do a daily video because I had a, a taste basically uh, that I had to go. So I couldn't, able, couldn't really do it on Friday. And it was a gym taste. It was a taste for my uh, my martial art. So basically, I was very tired the last the uh, following day, Saturday, and pretty much you know just took the whole weekend off. So anyway, I'm back at here right now. It's Monday. We have 15 minutes to uh, 2 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. So you know about an hour before London opens. Let's take a look at what's happening for this week. Uh, over the weekend, we don't really have much major news happening, you know. Of course, as if you don't count what happened between uh, Middle East, Jerusalem, uh, where Donald Trump named it as the capital for Israel. But it's not on weekend. I remember it was on Friday. So basically, that was the really, that was the headline. Today, the biggest headline, you know, Monday is usually very quiet, but today the biggest headline is going to be the Bitcoin future, which is going to open in the Chicago uh, uh, future board. So that's, you know, another headline from Bitcoin. Really, Bitcoin is really the hottest uh, currency in terms of news coverage. OK, I'm not saying it's the best currency to buy or sell. Frankly speaking, I don't know much about the cryptocurrency. But just for the uh, you know news media coverage point of view, it is really, really the main, the big, biggest one that's making the most headline. Okay, it's also the most volatile one. Now, uh, Monday this week, we don't again don't really have much going on, and I'm just gonna go one by one and tell you my uh, perspective for each currency. For Japanese yen, of course, right now nothing has changed for safe haven currency. So for Japanese yen, for Swiss franc. Everything remains the same. It's a risk, have a safe haven currency that's going to react to the risk sentiment. So the question to ask yourself is, can we know uh, what kind of risk sentiment that we might have? For an economic point of view, for this week, supposedly we should have a risk on sentiment. Why? Because this is the week that Federal Reserve most likely is going to raise interest rate to 1.5%. Uh, we also going to have more of a possibility, well, not a possibility, so almost certain for the tax bill reform. Right now, people are talking about the well, how is that going to affect everyone's tax and corporations' tax. So all these are kind of a pro business news, and of course, close to the holiday season, there's a lot of shopping going on. So most likely, uh, there's a lot of good consumption from people. Those are the reasons for us to have a risk on sentiment, which is going to uh, pressure Japanese yen and Swiss franc. However, as I mentioned before, personally, I think the world is go going in a more chaotic path. You, we saw a large military drill between Japan, Cor South Korea, and uh, American uh, in basically a show of muscle toward uh, missile launch by North Korean. So this thing is really getting heated up, right? We have Republican senator uh, publicly urge Americans expats who are still in South Korea to basically evacuate. Of course, if you're a military, you cannot evacuate. But he's advised uh, the military's family members, just everybody, every American citizen, US citizen should evacuate out of the Peninsula Island. And seems to we don't know what's gonna happen. Of course, it's a again uh, another new event historically. I personally never been through any war, so I couldn't really tell you. I mean, very luckily, couldn't really tell you what kind of pattern this is going to be. Of course, we did have back then. There's a Korean War, but I was I was I was too young. I was not born yet, so I don't know how this is gonna play out. But those are the reason for a risk of sentiment, and those are. The reason Japanese yen, Swiss franc, or gold might go up. Of course, I think 
if we comes down to that point, if we're going to have a war, then that going to take a more priority or more precedent than all the economic data. So personally, I'm actually bullish for Japanese yen and Swiss franc, not only because what happening, what's happening in North Korea, just because of what's also happening in the Middle East uh, over the you know the uh, uh, Jerusalem issues and holiday Christmas season. I think we might have more terrorist attack from you know Taliban or ISIS things like that. So I think I rather uh, leaning toward more a safe haven bias. I know right now for Japanese yen or even gold. If you take a look at gold price, it's all in the downside because for now, and I say for this week, because of the uh, central bank events, generally speaking, economic point of view should be a quite risk on sentiment. Christmas season is always good. Spending, spending is good for the country, for the corporation. But I don't know. You know, you just have to take major into what's going to happen geopolitically. Okay, so that's for Japanese yen. Now for euro, really. It's, a, it's still a neutral currency. So because the neutral neutrality state of, of euro is actually not a bad currency to buy or to sell, right? It's uh, as I mentioned, it's really depending on which currency do you pair up with euro. So things pre-exit passed, uh, sorry, the first stage of negotiation of pre-exit has passed last week. Of course, that actually benefited for British pound, but also we saw a very typical buy rumor sale fact effect, as you can see. And that's what I was saying that I, I was actually hoping that to happen, of course, because I'm short British pound. And we really, that was what happened. You see, we're trying to make another high on the announcement of a uh, pre-exit negotiation. And we couldn't really break 35.50. And then we basically just went down and now we are close outside this regression channel. So that's just, you know, might be a sign that this is just really a retracement. We're going to the downside, especially this is a cable. So for this week, if we have a hawkish statement from Federal Reserve, then we might really see cable turning to the downside. What about uh, Euro Pound? So Euro Pound actually last week, I got stop out, and I said, as I said, predicted, I got stop out because of the short term volatility. So, you know, if we take a look at Europan, it's also have a buy rumor sell fact. The fact, as you can see, we have a drop here at the point when it reached the settlement, and then everything's going upside. Of course, it stopped me out here already. So, I think again for Euro, it's neutral. So. You could buy it or sell it really depending on which currency you pair up with. I wouldn't really buy or sell out of euro itself. That means, you know, there's no catalyst for euro. So there's no reason for me to buy or sell. But I will use it as a counter trade, as a counter partner. You know, really depend on what I partner up with. For example, if this week we have a, another very hawkish statement from Federal Reserve, then I'll be interested to sell euro. I'll be interested to sell euro. In a short-term perspective, and also if this week we have another bearish news out of pre-exit, <clears throat> then I also interesting to buy euro pound. Okay, so that's a, a sort of a, a underlying strategy where I, I will play euro if I want to buy or sell it. For dollar, of course, this week is the Federal Reserve week. Now, most likely. You know, take a look at dollar index right now. It is is in uptrend. But as I mentioned, I was worried because I was hoping we to break out ninety five already because we passed the tax reform bill, and that was not the case. If that's not the case, then this week typically we should have a buy rumor sell fact effect. In fact, I don't even think we're gonna have a buy rumor. The reason is because no one is buying U.S. dollar out of this week's possible rate hike. Okay. Wednesday, if they hike the interest rate, is nothing new. Okay, everyone already knew or expected it to happen. So the the surprise is actually in the in the downside if they don't hike interest rate. Of course, if Feds come out and become very very hawkish, which is very unlikely, there's no reason for them to become hawkish. Now, some people might say that what about the non-farm payroll last Friday? Let's take a look at that non-farm payroll last Friday. Has added a lot of job data, two hundred twenty-eight thousand. But 
look at the average earning, it's still lower than the expected number. So not only that, look at last time, it's actually revised even lower at the negative 0.1%. So it's just, it's just not a really positive picture in terms of inflation, okay? Yes, there's a lot of people getting jobs, but you're not getting paid too much of money. The money is not growing, and, and this is really what the Federal Reserve worry about. So this is actually, when I look at non-farm payroll last Friday, I don't think it's negative, but I also think it's positive. I didn't, you know, I didn't trade. My plan was to sell or buy only if we have a deviation outside uh, outside deviation number, and we didn't have it, or right? it was within the expected number. So for me to look at US dollar this week, I'm really most likely not going to take any dollar trade before the Federal Reserve event, okay? Because I, I don't want to write the train up because we I don't think uh, the buy rumor sell fact effect is going to be too strong, right? Most money, if you want to buy US dollar out of the Federal Reserve December rate hike, you, you will already be in a couple weeks ago or even months ago. Okay, because this is pretty much a sure thing if you look at the futures market. Already 90% above probability. On the other hand, I also don't want to short US dollar out of the buy rumor sell fact effect because I don't know what kind of statement Federal Reserve will give. You never know how um, the new chair, even though he's not officially, well, he is officially already, but you never know what kind of statement will come out. Maybe they will be very hawkish. We don't know, right? Things, and also things the tax reform has already passed. So right now I'm actually kind of neutral for US dollar. Fundamentally speaking, yes, we have a lot of good news for US dollar. The tax reform bill passed. We're going to hike interest rate. Economy is doing well, right? For the ma major picture, Economy is doing well, right? The only lagging indicator is the inflation. But look at the price action. I just don't see enough interested buyer to push the price at 95. Well, I'm kind of disappointed. So for me, this is still just a range bump. Right? I want to see a DAX to break above 95 before I buying another dollar again. Especially since I'm already in dollar trade. So I don't want to add on position. So I'm already in dollar trade from the previous reason, which I'll talk about later. So I don't want to add on a position. So I will see, I will actually hold my position, <coughs> excuse me, and see uh, what kind of statement come out from Wednesday. Okay, so that's for US dollar. For Aussie, again, Aussie is, you know, last week we have a negative uh, GDP data well, not, not negative, but uh, negative than the expected number. And then we have an, uh, also a, a miss on the trade balance. So two uh, fundamental data that are in the negative side to push LC. On top of that, look at the copper market also is in a downtrend right now. Now, it's, it might still just be a retracement if you zoom out, look at the big picture, big picture, big picture. But um, as for now, in the short term, not looking too well for LZ. That doesn't mean I will like jump in and sell it uh, for this week, just because unless you, you, you have a good reason to sell it, but you want to pair up with something that you think is strong enough. Now, definitely I don't want to do with LZ dollar, just because I, as I mentioned, I don't know how the dollar is going to react to from Wednesday's statement. I actually had a trade for LZ cat, which I'm still in actually, because I was, I got in at here, 30, 37%. It's really just a range bound area right now. So I'm still quite bullish in Canadian dollar and quite faithful just because it's more stable in terms of a geopolitical uh, effect. I'll, I'll go into the trade later. I'm just gonna go on one by one the currency first. So I'll see this week, um, that's my point of view. And I don't think there is any, uh, well, is RBA government gonna speak? But aside from that, yes, you have a labor market. Aside from that, you know, it, it's a still a neutral currency and because previous fundamental data had been negative. So right now it's a sort of in a negative side. Of course, if this week 
uh, the employment change, employment data came out a very big surprise. Yes, that is going to turn around LZ. Okay, so LZ is really just a short term play for me. It's not going to be a currency I'm going to sell forever or buy forever, right? It's really depend. What the reason is because uh, fundamentally, bigger picture wise, is very neutral. So it really depends on uh, the individual data to push it. So even for my Aussie cat trade, if you see, it's a one hour, right? One hour for me is a short term trade. So for me, I take I took this trade uh, because of the fund negative fundamental negative data, because the uh, commodity market was in the downside last week. And also because we have a risk of sentiment last week. And I paired up with CAD because CAD is very strong fundamentally. Now, sentimentally, um, people markets start selling CAD out of the Bank of Canada statement because market perceived as a dovish. I personally think that's going to be a short term effect. People are going to start buying Canadian dollar again. So that's my reason to enter Aussie cash short. I'm still going to hold it, but if we have a very positive employment change this week, I might just get out and reverse my position. Okay, we'll see what happened. But this is this is our this is our all not something we can predict for now or prepare to trade into it. Right? For me, this is just something I can trade at the release. Okay, I really nothing I can prepare right now. Um. Now, of course, you have these two. No, well, these two Chinese data are not that important for for LZ. Okay. Now, we also have the CPI. Now, this will be interesting for British pound. Right now, British pound is uh, in a very interesting spot. On the other hand, on one hand, it gets a boost from the pre exit negotiation. Right, we passed the stage one, but there are a lot of doubt over the future negotiation. People are saying that if in a stage one, we have seen that this this kind of difficulties to even just pass a stage one, people are become more like hopeless for a stage two. Also, a lot of negotiation is only in the draft. A lot of people are saying that Theresa May is not going to have any sort of support for her own party, especially there's a lot of hardcore pre-exit uh, conservatives within her own party. Now, for that being said, we are still currently riding a good sentiment for British pound. Except if you if you pair British pound up with a stronger currency like dollar or pound or euro, you might see a more bi-rumor sell fact effect. But if you pair British pound up with like pound yen or even pound Aussie, the British pound is still a dominant currency. But this week we're going to see another CPI data. Uh, this, of course. Expectation is still three percent. If we if if this was three, nothing's really gonna happen. Obviously, if we have something better than three, that's going to inject more strength into British pound. If we have something lower than three, that's going to drop British pound, particularly versus dollar or euro. So again, this is something I want to trade at the catalyst because I don't know what's gonna happen. So I definitely don't want to trade into it. Right now, I'm still have cable short, so that's something. Um, of course, I only pair British pound or euro when I want to sell British pound. Uh, let's keep going. Uh, we have PPI data from US. Draghi is going to speak. Government lawyers speak from from RBA, and then we have basically a job data from UK. So this again will be something that's tradable only if we can see first we need to see what's happening for the CPI then we can and we need to see how is the market react to British pound on Wednesday okay because today after London open we will see if we have more interesting buyer to buy in British pound out of the pre exit negotiation or vice versa people just don't care about it anymore we reached the deal there's nothing more to look forward to Let's sell it because the future is still uncertain, right? This this scenario are all two scenarios are all valid. Okay, so I don't know and I don't want to guess. So I'll, I'll, I'll at this moment I will look at the price action. Okay, I have a because I think both scenarios are valid. I'm more leaning towards selling it just because I think all the money that people want to make have been made out of the uh, pre exit negotiation for stage one. Right now, I don't know who is gonna buy it. 
because we are going to a stage two, and right now there's really there's no positive news for that. So I think I'm leaning toward a pound short at this moment. But we never know, or never know how the market is going to react to. Average earning, and then we'll see what happened here. Again, you can trade it, but I was really strongly like, don't trade it as a single event because right now the pre-exit issues and the, and the inflation is going to take a bigger impact. So you want to trade alongside with that kind of sentiment. What I mean is that, let's say if the inflation is 3.1% and later on with London open Monday, Tuesday, people are actually buying British pound because of pre ex negotiation, then you have a very strong bullish momentum. Then you don't want to sell pound regardless of what's happening to labor market. Maybe you have a very negative one it's still not going to be a strong sentiment to over overpass the previous bullish sentiment. Now, vice versa, if CPI dropped below 3% and Monday, Tuesday, people start selling British pound because they think the pre exit negotiation stage two will be more difficult, then you don't want to buy British pound even if we have a good labor market data because this labor market data is not going to be strong enough to overturn the previous bearish sentiment. Okay, that's just something you have to keep in mind. Don't look at fundamental events as a single event. You have to look at a bigger contest. Of course, Wednesday, uh, you're also going to see the CPI data from US, but most likely it's not gonna create too much effect just because afternoon we have a FOMC meeting. So normally it's a good uh, CPI data, it, of course it's very important, but FOMC is going to take more uh, major for the market. So I think Wednesday usually wins FOMC. We usually have a very quiet London and New York session all the way until Tuesday. Uh, sorry, all the way until 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Then we also have a, a press conference. So really, this is where the major events going to happen in the press conference where the reporters will ask questions about the future, about 2018. Then the traders investor will start hearing a lot of hint of what's gonna happen in the, in, the, in the 2018. So this will be much more important than the rate. The rate is not important for this instance, just because the expectation for 1.5% have already been priced in. The statement will have made, uh, have some impact, but you know, half hour later, people will turn their focus on the conference. So this will really be the moment you could trade, uh, trade through the conference if you hear something. Then of course at night we have Aussie data as I mentioned. We also have a Chinese data right after it. Okay, normally I don't like to trade uh, Asian station data. It's just because it's not there's not a lot of uh, momentum, right? Regardless of the data itself. So normally I I mean normally I don't like to day trade these kind of a catalyst. I could get into a swing trade use this as a trigger, but I wouldn't really stay beside my desk to like, you know, doing a little bit short term day trade because my personal experience is that there's just not enough volatility or momentum to push to somewhere meaningful for me. Thursday, um, we have a few PMI here, LIBOR rate, you know, rate from SMB is really not, it's just not a big event, right? SMB or Swiss franc, it's just like Japanese yen, nothing, really knew it's gonna happen, so market is not really paying too much attention. And then uh, let's see what else. Then Thursday, you have the Bank of England. This again, it's not as important as last time because last time everybody was expecting they to rate, to uh, to hike and they did hike. Uh, and then you, as you can see, we have a lot of big roller coaster right from the last meeting because they, they, they hike but the message was that that's a one-time deal. Okay, at least that's a market perception. So that was a big Thursday. That was a super Thursday last time. This time, not so much, all right? Nobody expect Bank of England to hike. I don't expect them to hike. I wouldn't, I also don't expect any change in monetary policy. The truth is that nothing gonna change for Bank of England right now, unless the government can stabilize its future, right? That's why it's, a very tough situation for UK right now because the central bank needs to make their projection based on a stable government, a stable government standing, a stable trade balance, things like that. 
we now don't e- don't even know what's going to happen to uh, UK in the future. Of course, right now they have transitional period, so everything will stay the same for UK in the Euro EU zone. But again, like I said, I highly doubt that things will just like go so smoothly like this. The reason is because PMA does not have enough power within her own party. This is something you have to understand. She might get ousted again. There's a lot of hardcore pre exiters wants to uh, really they wanna they wanna they basically basically they wanna they wanna tough up. They don't wanna they, they just they don't like how the PMA deal with the whole thing. Okay. So this Thursday, of course I'm going this is a very important event, but I don't think it's gonna be too much of a surprise as last time unless unless on Tuesday the CPI is like more than 3.1%. So that's you see what I'm saying? It's really you have to look at bigger context. If CPI is more than 3.1% on Tuesday, then then people will ask um people will ask or want to know where where that will affect the policy summary. Okay. Maybe Bank of England will address that, things like that. So we also going to see a ECB mini rate. Um, again, I also don't expect a surprise from ECB because last time was a big event. This time, not so much. They had made out uh, the plan for 2018. I don't think they're going to change or to give too much surprise comments. Also, you know, look at on hindsight, this is a very important week just because you have three central, you actually have four central banks coming out. But if you're looking into a more detail, none of them going to be a big surprise. Or well, Federal Reserve, the press conference is going to be very important. But for SMB, for Swiss franc, not so much. For Bank of England, I don't think it's, big, it's going to be a big surprise. And for ECB, I also don't think it's going to be a big surprise. You have a retail sale data from US. I don't think it's again right now for US dollar. I really don't trade any data other than inflation data. Okay, that for me is the biggest, most important thing that's going to create enough momentum and volatility for the trade to make sense. Okay, so this kind of core retail, retail, it's important but not tradable for me. And then Polos is going to speak Bank of Canada. This I don't know what's gonna speak, but you know, depend if you have time, you could listen to it. Um, I don't know what's gonna speak. I for me, Can- Canadian dollar right now, it's again a very neutral currency. I'm more bullish toward it, and I think what's gonna affect it will be a major. Right now, at least, will be the oil market. That's really what's gonna drive it because internally, we don't really have much surprise. And most fundamental data have been very have been very well for Canada this week this this year sorry so that's why I'm quite bullish about it. We also going to see manufacturing data for Japan again that's not going to affect Japanese yen and uh, that's pretty much NPC member Holden speaks and that's pretty much it. Okay, so you know um, biggest event of course Tuesday CPI from UK. Will be uh, I will I will stay beside my desk just because I don't know maybe we have something more or less, but if it's three percent three percent there's nothing to uh, to do, but if you have three point one or two point nine then that's something you might sell or buy, but you have to look at a bigger contest as I say we want to know first how the market react to the pre exit negotiation because they reached a deal on Friday right the market closed. So of course Friday before the market closed, you always have traders try to wrap up. So you you most likely you have a selling into British pound. But we want to know how Monday and Tuesday how people react to British pound. And then uh, Wednesday an FOMC press conference will also be important, and that's pretty much it to be honest. That doesn't mean I'll just skip out the central bank events. I'm still gonna you know beside my desk trade through it but i i don't have any plan for this so unless unless any surprise news come out from the wire otherwise i don't plan to i didn't i don't plan anything i don't plan anything actually for this week there's no trade that i'm planning to trade into it so this week will all be a catalyst space i mean that means i will see where the opportunity comes through the wire 
through the internet, through the information to make my decision. Okay. Now let's take a look at my current trade. So for um, cable, okay, so I'm still in cable. And for me, the critical point, I actually cancel, I, you know, originally I say, I will get out at 50% if we can come down here and I cancel it just because my new analysis is that we might have a buy rumor sell fact effect. So I actually cancel and we did touch down here, but I'm still in and then we have, we really have a buy rumor sell fact effect. Looks like it, I don't know. So we will see how the market react this week. But as for now, this 3550 is just a very, very strong support, you know. So if that one gets breakout, of course, not uh, not a bearish view, right? If we can break out here, keep going up. So we'll see how the market react to last Friday's news. Okay. And also it's less accurate to look at cable than determine the strengths or weakness of British pump just because US dollar also have a big event this Wednesday. Now, if you look at Euro pound might be more accurate, uh, but also I wouldn't really get into British pound uh, are more than one pair basically. Right now my idea is to sell it because I think we might have a buy rumor sale fact, but I'm not going to do that just because we have a CPI data here. Uh, I'm gonna wait for that one first. Okay, we also have an average earnings. So for me, it's just better to trade life at a catalyst rather than putting pending order for British Pound. Euro Pound obviously I got stopped out here last Thursday or Friday morning. So this was my stop loss. I got stop out. And this is just like a stop hunt, to be honest with you. You can just be very, very clear, right? It, it's, a, it's a low here. There's a lot of stop stop loss here. So it goes down, penetrate that, and ref, and it goes up, okay? Now, of course, that doesn't mean I will normally you know, put something like this low. For me, no, you know, this trade, we, we, we got in at the middle of here, and basically the whole scenario just changed right so for me it's nothing really manageable for me for this trade dollar cat uh i got in i think last last week also not looking too well at the moment got in i hear the breakout of this low and originally my stop loss was above this double top high right now we'll see what happened if we this week have a very strong us dollar most likely this trade is going to get stopped out and if not, then this trade is going to keep going to the downside. So the truth is, I don't know. We'll have to see how the FOMC press conference and statement comes out. What about dollar yen? Now dollar yen, I'm more or less worried about it because this is such a long-term perspective, right? It's an eight-hour trade. I'm really just trading, really, really expecting to hold it well into 2018. So not really going to do to anything about it. Of course, if we can break this high, then I could move my stop loss below this swing low. But as for now, I'm just gonna let it run. So I will only start managing something when we break 114.75 or even 115, right? That's even better. Aussie cat got in last week. I'm still in, still holding it. I got in at here. So 96.58 was my entry. And the reason is because Aussie had a two negative fundamental data last week, plus a, 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 a bearish market into a commodity market. Meanwhile, I think the uh, Bank of Canada uh, was was dovish, yes, but I don't think the sentiment is going to last too long. I think they are still very strong currency and worthwhile to buy. Now, this week, of course, if LC had a good employment data, then we will be in a further drawdown. I don't think it's any. I don't think any events is going to put LC, you know, stronger to to stop us out. But um, we'll see what happened. Like if we, and I want to also want to see what happened to the oil market to make my decision. So this one, it's a short term, an hour, one hour trade. I'm still confident to buy cat, but I 
don't know whether whether I will hold it. Well, depending on how the market reacts. So I'm still in this trade right now. I might get out if we have a very positive Aussie data, and we also have a positive commodity market and a positive Chinese data. Then I will say the sentiment completely changed from last week. Then I might just get out of this trade. Okay, so we'll see what happened. For New Zealand cat, this is obviously uh, New Zealand everything rebound. And the reason is because they announced the new government. So right now the government is a sitting, acting governor. Okay, so this governor, uh, what's his name, Stephen or something? He's going to be the governor until March. Then they announce a new person. I actually don't. Uh, to be honest with you, I don't know why the announcement uh, make New Zealand to shoots up. The only reason i think because it's less uncertainty okay now at least you know who is going to be a long-term governor for next year and for new z the original reason for it to be sort of was the uncertainty uncertainty regards to the government uncertainty regards to the future rbnz policy so right now a little bit of certainty will be beneficial for new z and that's probably the reason why on the announcement of a new government with governor, we see New Z actually reverse. Same thing happened to New Z Yen. It's actually reverse on the announcement of the new governor. I'm actually short in both New Z Cat and New Z Yen. And uh, New Z Cat I got in here, and I, you know, that's precisely what I say. I would not move my stop loss here. Remember last week, I say I'm not ready to move. Even last week when we were here, when we were already here, a lot of uh, some pe some people asked me, were they able to, were they able to move the stop loss here? I say they could, but I, I wouldn't do it. The reason is because we haven't been able to break this low. So for me, unless we break this low, otherwise we are still within this range. And to be honest, if you move your stop loss here versus here, you only really save like few pips. It's not even about pips. Look at the percentage. You only save few percentage. Right, it's not. It, it just doesn't make any sense for a bigger picture. For me, to move up those here and here it doesn't make any sense because I I want to make sure I want to make sure this low to breaks because I don't want the trade go up maybe stop us out and then continue to go down. If it stop us out and continue to go up and hey, that's fine, that's fine. But you know you don't want to get stopped out just because you want to save few percentage. And that was that was what happened right now. If you move here, you get stopped out already. And then we don't even know. Maybe this this is just a shortened sentiment. For now, I don't know. I think for New Z, it's such a neutral currency. We don't really have any catalyst, so people might really buying this continuously just because New Z has been sold over for so many uh, so many months. But on the other hand, this news, this piece of news alone, I don't really know why people would be so ex excited to buy it. So I personally still bearish about New Z, and I really ex I expect a reversal very soon to the downside. Same as New Z Yen. I really re expect a reversal to the downside. Uh, but we'll see what happens because I don't see any other catalyst that's going to push New Z uh, to another new high. So this might just be a short term momentum and we might see it reverse. Okay, now if that's the case, then if you move your stop loss, then really maybe next time you you can again ask yourself it really depends on your risk appetite but for me i just i just don't i, I just didn't do it okay so for me i do and i'm still in this trade again because i'm still expecting new z to go to the downside as because the reason for new z to be bearish it's still there right the original reason for new z to be bearish is because their inflation is low their central bank is still has a loosened policy and their government is still uncertain as a coalition government as a new party new ruler and all these things are still existed so that's why i'm still bearish about new z and the currency that i'm buying against cat i'm still bullish so i'm so i'm still buying now new z yen why did i buy it why did i sell it again i like to buy japanese yen in december as i mentioned so my choice was between new z yen or Aussie yen and I pick New Z Yen just because I think New Z Yen, New Z has a longer term of fundamental weakness.
comparing to LZ. So that's why I pick New Zien. Speaking of that, let's take a look at LZN. Let's see what 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 happened to it. Because we have a pretty uh pretty good pretty good downtrend uh, last week from LZN. All right, so pretty much we had a little bit recover last week, but now it goes down again. Now I don't know. Really, um, looking at the chart is still in the downtrend perspective. Uh, obviously, this low needs to be to be broken, and this will be an important high. So if you're looking at four hour chart, you know the best high and low will be from here to here and i think everybody can see it right it's just a very obvious swing high so right now we haven't even touched 50 percent area so still in a more bearish uh, territory but all this just a technical pattern we really have to see what happened to some of the data this week and what happened to the commodity market okay so that's pretty much what i'm looking at this week now of course i'm going to be back uh later on uh, New York uh, New York session finish and continue doing my daily video. Now if you have any question, you know, feel free to just contact me and let me know. Okay? Thanks for watching. Bye bye.